This video and the other videos to follow have been put together to help you prepare for the fifth grade ASA, which stands for the Alabama Science Assessment. We're going to go through the different content standards and the types of content that are eligible to be on this particular exam. I'm going to start by looking at content standard number one, being able to identify evidence of chemical changes and there's one, two, three, four different ways that you can identify that a chemical change possibly has occurred. You could find it through change in the color. There could be the formation of gas. There could be the formation of something solid. And then a temperature change. These are all different ways that you could tell a chemical change has possibly taken place. So let's look first at the chemical changes that could be detected through color change. And there's quite a few of these examples that are given for the ASA. First example, if you think about the Statue of Liberty, we don't usually think of the Statue of Liberty as being the color that is shown here. It does have a thin layer of copper all the way over the outside of the Statue of Liberty. So originally, this is the color that it was. But of course, today we know it to look like this. Why does that happen? Chemical change. The reaction of the copper with the oxygen in the air creates copper oxide, which has this grayish um, blue tint, greenish blue tint to it. So although it originally looked like this, today it always looks like this because it's outside. It's exposed to the oxygen in the air, and the, um, the copper oxide takes place, giving it this color. You can do some testing to try out what's going on with copper if you use pennies. And we did an experiment with our, in our classroom with cleaning pennies with ketchup, but you could also do it with vinegar and salt. We found that the salt and the vinegar inside the ketchup allowed us to clean the pennies and get rid of the copper oxide, but you could also do it with just vinegar and salt. So if you go to science-sparks.com and type in why is the Statue of Liberty green, you can find this experiment and you can play around with vinegar and salt and cleaning your pennies. Another example that's given for the ASA is the statue of the god Vulcan, which is found in Birmingham, Alabama. This statue is made out of cast iron, and so when it's exposed to the oxygen, iron and oxygen produce iron oxide, which is the fancy name for rust. This statue typically would be covered in rust, but they've done a lot of work on it over the last few years and it has been painted with a special protective paint that gives it its original color and so we don't see a lot of rust on it anymore. It could still get rust on it if the paint were to chip off in certain places but for the most part it stays this gray color and you don't really see the rust on it anymore. However, you can still see rust on the USS Alabama that is here in Mobile. They do a really good job of keeping it clean as well and keeping a protective coating of paint on it. But from time to time, you can still see rust. There is some rust here. But as you can see, most of the outside of the ship is gray with the color of the paint that they've put on it. But again, this ship is made out of iron. And anywhere that the raw iron and oxygen would mix, it would create iron oxide. Another way to tell if a chemical change has taken place, another example of a color change, is with a glow stick. You know that when you first get a glow stick, it's not glowing. You have to bend it in order to get it to glow. This is a picture that shows you of, of what's actually taking place. There's a glass tube inside of the glow stick containing one chemical, and it's surrounded by another chemical. 
And when you bend the glow stick, you're actually breaking the glass tube on the inside, allowing those two chemicals to mix. And it's the chemical reaction that takes place between those two chemicals that produces the glow. Another example is when you're making a cake. If you start off with the raw batter and then put it into the oven, you're going to come out with something totally different. They look very different from each other. This is an example of a chemical change. You can also tell through the ripening of fruit and vegetables. Perfect example is a banana. This one shows you starting at green and it works its way to yellow and then eventually it becomes brown and if you've had bananas stay in your house long enough you know that they also will then turn black. This change in color is an indication of a chemical change. Same with fruit and uh, with vegetables. We have some tomatoes that start out green and as they ripen they turn red. Two different types of, of tomatoes here starting green and turning red. We also have the experiment that we've been conducting in the classroom where we put an apple core in a, in a bag and sealed it up and we have slowly watched as the oxygen has made its way into the bag along with the bacteria we have watched the, the apple core decay, begin to rot and decay. The chemical change is still visible even after the fruit ripens, as it over ripens it begins to rot. That's still a chemical change that's taking place. So those are some good examples of how we could make a judgment as to whether a chemical change is taking place through looking at it has there been a change in color? Is there a change in its appearance? There are other ways we can tell as well. The next one, if we look up here, we have the first through color change and then through the gas formation. Sometimes we can tell if a gas is being produced, we can tell that a chemical change has taken place. This is different than bubbles as in boiling water. If we boil water, there's definitely bubbles taking place, but that's not a chemical change. That's just water turning into its vapor state or gaseous state. That is not a formation of a new gas that would indicate a chemical change. But we do, however, have a couple of examples um, with a gas formation baking soda and vinegar. When we mix those two together, we get a gas that is produced. And here is a quick little image of that taking place. That is an example with soda, baking soda and vinegar. This also gives you a couple of other examples down here. We have, you could burn wood. That is going to create a gas as you burn the wood. Baking the cake also creates a gas. Placing effervescent tablets in water. There's another example. And here's one that I found on YouTube that is a slow motion of an effervescent tablet being put in water.
right? The next way that you could tell that a chemical change might be taking place is that if a solid is formed, an example of this would be if you see rust on nails or if you saw the rust on a vehicle, you know that those items are made with iron or they have iron in them and oxygen has mixed with those two creating iron oxide. The rust won't go away unless you somehow scrape it off or are able to put it in a solution that will help dissolve the rust. The rust is a new solid thing itself that is composed of oxygen and iron. It is something new. It has created a new substance that is no longer the iron uh, that it originally was. Another way to tell that a chemical reaction may be taking place is through a temperature change. When food is composted, a temperature change is taking place. The food substances, as they rot, a chemical change is taking place and it produces heat. And that's it for this, uh, this first video. I do want to say one thing though. Uh, the last part is to be able to distinguish the difference between a chemical and a physical change. Ask yourself if whatever has occurred can be undone. Can you undo the rust? No. You can scrape it off. You can clean it off with the right kind of solutions. You can't undo it. You can't pull back apart the iron and the oxygen and have it undo itself. When you bake a cake, you can't unbake the cake. When you start with that original batter and you cook it, you can't take that cake that's been cooked and turn it back into the original batter. Obviously, you can't undo the ripening of fruit or vegetables. You can't undo any of these that we've given an example. You can't undo the breaking of the uh, the mixing of the two chemicals in order to have a glowing glow stick. You can't undo that. You can't undo the rust on the USS Alabama and you can't undo the tarnish that has taken place with the the copper oxide on the Statue of Liberty. You can clean it off but you can't undo it. Right? So this ends the first the first video to help you with content standard number one in preparing for the fifth grade Alabama science assessment.